In this video, I'll be showing you how to create your own button in Pygame. Whether you're working on some kind of UI or some kind of game, you're likely going to need some kind of button so that your player can interact with the game. This is what I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to be making a button class and I'm going to be showing you how to use the button class, how to draw it on the screen, how to check for input, all of that stuff. And I know you just want to see how it looks right now. So I'll just run the code and you can see we are going to have our button right here. If it just loads, we are going to have our button that says click me and and you can change this text to be whatever you want. But for now, I, I just leave it at click me. So if we hover over this button, as you can see, it turns to green for this nice kind of effect, just for aesthetics, pretty much. And if we click this button, then over here, it will say button press. So you can customize what you want to happen when you click the button. But for now, I just made a print statement and I said print button press. But again, you can change this to be whatever you want. It's very customizable. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You just have a simple button. And you can also change the image of the button. If you don't really like this kind of red button, then you can make your own button image and you can use that instead. So with that being said, let's get straight into the code and straight into the video. So if you don't really care about how the button works, then you can just go to the link in the description and the pinned comment to just get the code and copy and paste it and use it in your own projects. But if you want to know how this works, then you should probably stick around. So here, firstly, what we're doing is we're just creating our screen, we're initializing Pygame, all of that boilerplate. And now here we are creating our font. And this font, it, it can be anything you want. But for me, I just want to choose Cambria because it looks pretty nice and it's actually installed on every PC by default. So that's why I chose Cambria and I chose 50 point as the font size because it's a nice font size. It's, it goes pretty well with the button. So yeah, and then we have the actual button class as I was showing before and it has a couple of methods. The first method is, as you can see here, the init method. And then we have the update method, the check for input method, and the change color method. So the init method just initializes the button and makes all these variables. So as you can see, we are making our image, which is going to be the image we want to display as the button. And the image that we do want to display as the button is going to be this image here, as you can see, this massive button. But don't worry about the size of it because we are going to be scaling this down in the code. But yeah, it's just a nice PNG that I found online and I'm using it for this project. So yeah, that's the image. And then we have our X position and our Y position. So yeah, that's pretty self explanatory, just the coordinates of where we want to put our button. And then we are creating a rect. And if you don't know what a rect is in Pygame, then you should probably uh, learn learn what a rect is because it's actually very important. All this is doing though, in our case is it's letting us check for uh, check for our input later on. So how we do this is we just get the rect using the get rect function in Pygame and we make the center of the rect equal to our x pos and y pos. And now we have another variable called text input because we want to store the text in its own variable here. So then we create our text object, which is just going to be the text that you see on the screen. And we create another rect for our text object here with text rect. So it's doing the same thing as this normal rect, but it's just for the text. So yeah, that's the init function done. Now let's move on to the update function. And I should be calling these methods actually because these are part of an object. So yeah, they're not functions, they're methods. Anyway, so the update method does two things. Firstly, it puts the button image, as I showed you before, on the screen. And it uses the position of the rect to tell Pygame where to put the button. And then what we do is we blit the text image to the text rect. And this blit function just puts an image on the screen. I don't know why it's called blit, but it's just called blit. The Pygame developer has named it blit. I don't know why, but yeah, you should just know that it puts an image on the screen. So now moving on from the update method, we have the check for input method, which takes in a position and it checks if that position's coordinates are within the bounds of the button. And the position is actually going to be the mouse position because we want to check if our mouse position is within the realms of our button, then that means we did click the button. And if we click the button, then what it's going to do is it's going to print button press. It's just using some simple logic. It's testing if the position zero, which is going to be the X position because the position is actually a tuple. So the zeroth element is going to be the X position. 
So if the x position is in the range of the furthest left side of the button to the furthest right side of the button, and the, the y position is in the range of the furthest top of the button and the furthest bottom, bottom of the button, if both of those conditions are met, then we print button press. All right, so that's the check for input done. Now we have the change color method, which again takes in a position and it uses the same logic in the check for input method, except what it does here is if we are clicking, if we are actually hovering over the button, then it's going to update our text object that we made over here. It's going to, it's going to update that and it's going to change the color to green. However, if we are actually not hovering over it, and as you can see with this else block, then what we are going to do is we are going to make the color white again. So yeah, that's the button object completely done, the class. So we can just close that and we can move on here. Now what we're doing here is we are actually just creating the button. So the button has a couple of parameters as we saw before. The first thing is the image. So here our image is going to be button surface and I'll get into that in a second, but let's just go over the button object for now. And then the second parameter is going to be the X position, which is which we want to be at 400 pixels. And the third position, I mean, the third parameter is going to be the Y position. And the Y position is going to be 300 pixels. So we don't want it to be completely in the center, but we want it to be close to the center. And the last parameter is the text input parameter, which is just the text that we're showing on the screen. As you can see, I've put click me, but we can change this to whatever we want. And we can also leave it empty if we wanted to. And now, as I mentioned before, the button surface over here, the button surface is just an image of the button that I showed you here. So this is the button and we are loading in this button through our button surface. And in this next line of code on line 34, we are scaling the button down because again, as I showed you, this button is like enormous. So we can't use this without scaling it down. So that's why you have to scale it down. And then yeah, we're creating the button. And now this is our main game loop. And in this game loop, the first thing we're doing is we're checking for events. So events in Pygame can be anything. They can be if you're quitting, if you're pressing down a mouse button, if you're pressing down a key or anything like that. Here, we're just checking for two events. We're checking firstly, if we quit the screen, then we should exit Pygame and exit Sys. And then another thing we're checking is if we are clicking down the mouse button, then we will call the check for input method, as I showed you before. And now here we're filling the screen with white. So white is gonna be our background color. You can change this to whatever you like. And then finally, we have our button, which we are updating. So we are just drawing it to the screen with the update method. And then we are calling the change color method that will just change the color if we're hovering over it. Finally, we're updating the display. So all of these changes get updated every time. So again, if we run this, as you can see, we have a completely functioning button that says click me and it, it changes to green when we hover over it. But we can actually change a lot of the things here. So firstly, we can change the text, which is the most obvious thing. So we can say instead of click me, maybe uh, YouTube. All right. So now the button will say YouTube. And if we hover over it, it's still going to turn green. So yeah, this is going to be pretty useful in all of your Python games, because there's going to be some customization, obviously. And again, you can change the parameters. So you can say, Maybe if you wanted to change the X position, you can change this to something like 100. So now we'll move it to the left over here and it's going to get cut off. So I don't really like that. What if we change it to something like 500? I wonder how that's going to look. So it's, it's a little to the right here and we can change the Y position as well, obviously. So we can change it to something like 200 and it's going to move up. If we change it to something like uh, 400, then it's going to move down pretty self-explanatory. You can change all these things with the code that I've provided in the description and in the pinned comment. And you can also change the scale and the size of the button. Uh, so here with this transform function, you can change these two parameters. So if you want to, if you want to make the button very wide, then you can increase this to something like 500. And it's obviously going to look ugly here, but it depends on what image you're using. So here, obviously it doesn't look good. But if you're using some kind of image that needs this kind of stretching, then you can obviously change that. If you want to change the height of it, you can do that as well. If you want to make it thinner, like 50, it's not, it's not going to look good. It's going to look like this, but you have that customization. So that's pretty much all I'm saying. 
So yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. I just wanted to quickly show you something in Pygame that you can use in all of your Pygame and your Python projects. I've, again, provided the code in the link in the description and in the pinned comment. So use the code however you want in your, all of your projects. If you found this video helpful or you liked it, then please consider hitting the like button because it really helps. And if you didn't like the video, then you can dislike it. And if you really liked the video and you want to see more tech and programming content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe with notifications on so that you get updated on all the new videos and that you never miss them. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, this has been LarTech signing out. Have a good day.